the title the circularity of the embodied mind and um, now from an embodied and inactive point of view the mind is not regarded as a disembodied internal representation of the world nor is it a system of brain modules and algorithms that allow to calculate and predict the world on the contrary it is an embodied mind that always integrates the present state of the whole organism interacting with the world. And it is a bodily subject whose experience extends over the body and which via its mediation is in direct contact with the world. So this implies two connected planes. First, it is not the brain alone that is constitutive for subjective experience. Much rather, is the system of, it is the system of brain and peripheral body continuously interacting with each other. And second, the subject actually inhabits the body. So I'm spatially extended, coextensive with my physical body, and its movements are literally my movements. In other words, the word, uh, the, the body is not the mere vehicle, but the very source and medium of my relation to the world. If we in this way reconceptualize, reconceptualize the disembodied mind, then the mind-body problem has to be recast. It is no longer a question of how the mind is related to the brain, but how the live or subject body and the living or object body are related to each other. Or in short, it becomes the body-body problem, as even Thompson has termed it. And a particular challenging aspect of this problem is the question how we may attribute a more than epiphenomenal role to subjective embodiment. Now, in my talk, I want to address this problem from several sides. First, I will present the concept of a dual aspect of the living being as subject body and object body. And then I will use the concept of circularity to describe the relation of both aspects. I will try to show that circularity characterizes the structure of embodiment, that circular causality characterizes the part-whole relation of the organism, and that circularity of process and structure characterizes the development of the organism and the living being over time. And this will finally lead to a proposal on how this development may be increasingly determined by the embodied subject itself as self-formation. Now to start with, cognitive Neuroscience is still based on the principal divide between the mental and the physical, or between the subjective mind and the objective body, the one only accessible from within, from the so-called first-person perspective, the other only accessible from without, from a third-person perspective. Now, what is lost in this principal divide is the human person, which essentially means a living being, an embodied subject interacting with others from a second person perspective. So the brain is primarily an organ of the living being, and only by this becomes an organ of the mind. For both life and mind are essentially related to what is beyond them dependent on the continuous exchange with their environment. So consciousness is not a localizable object or state at all, but it is a process of relating to and interacting with the environment. So it is something that we live and enact. 
And on this condition, the living organism, the living being in the center is the primary entity. So the common denominator of the mental and the physical, so to speak. And the life acts of the living being may then be regarded on the one hand as integral bodily, emotional, intellectual acts experienced from the first, but also from the second person perspective. On the other hand, from the right side, the life acts may be considered and investigated from a third person perspective, namely as physiological processes in any degree of detail. So the living being appears on the two aspects. On the one hand, as a lived body, a subject body. On the other hand, as a living, organic body, body as object. Now, instead of a gap between two radically different ontologies, we are now faced with a duality of act aspects within embodiment. And the question now is about the relation between one's body as objectively lived and one's body as a living organism. And the answer must be that processes of living and processes of experience, in German, Leben and Erleben, are both aspects of the life process seen from two complementary points of view. In French, we also have vivre et vivre quelque chose, or le vécu. So that's also the connection that is important here. Of course, this dual aspectivity corresponds to a cross sectional view. If we change to a di diachronic perspective, inactivism proposes the life mind continuity thesis, according to which living beings are always minded beings. <laughs>